Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Chris Thomas. This evening I'm going to be doing Pennsylvania, New York, and Vermont. Now, the reality is I say this evening, but really it takes me about two or three days to do a state when I have time. By the way, I'm full on working and getting ready for the pull ship myself, so and uh, so what will happen is uh, per state sometimes it takes me six takes and the reason is because um, I'll forget something and I want to make sure I cover everything so I've got to cover the rock and what it's going to do with uh, in this case stretching uh, the sea, what the what the what the pole mount is going to look like, and also what's going to happen with the with the new Madrid, uh, how it's going to affect the state, um, and also we have to consider uh, military installations. We have to look at uh, nuclear situations. Uh, we have to look at rivers. We have to look at dams, and. Uh, Sometimes a state will have a special situation, like for example, it's too flat. So if it's if it's a completely flat state, well then you're 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 very visible, and it's very susceptible to flooding, especially especially well for for military visibility and for flooding. Um, and then of course you have to look at the big cities and the migration and uh, what and what the pole melt is going to look like. So there's a lot of factors to bring into play. Uh, in a stream of consciousness, so that's why uh, I'll sometimes have to do. But the good news for me is that uh, the more I do uh, the takes, the smoother, and I can the more I can put put the package together for the state. By the way, uh, when I conclude the uh, series for the U.S., I will be doing a uh, full uh, a full. United States, uh, including of course uh, Af Alaska and um, and uh, Hawaii, um, a full review. And now, so I would like to mention uh, one really exciting thing I discovered for uh, the New England states uh, coming up in this video, the portion of this video where I do Vermont had not noticed it before. But this situation with the pole melt is going to create a fabulous inlet and an island and more fascinating will be the kind of tides that will be going through. And even more fascinating than that, believe it or not, will be as two islands I believe will be created in the stream of incredibly fast tides incredibly dangerous tides but for the adventurous and for the fit they may want to consider this new this discovery um, of mine that for a, a, a very, very interesting uh, safe location, a very special situation. So we'll, that'll be in near the end of the, uh, the video. So let's head into the state of Pennsylvania. Okay, we're going to look at Pennsylvania, USA. Uh, Pennsylvania has a lot of good things going for it, and it has some not so good things going for it. So it kind of balances out. Overall, I think it's a great place to be based on the kind of survival camp <clears throat> or area or community that you live you're living in. Um, <clears throat> late migrants to Pennsylvania 
and it's never recommended to to migrate for the pole shift late uh, in the process. They are likely to have a difficult time getting established, <clears throat> but this is true for any any person looking to relocate. So do it before 2020, 2021, in my opinion. Do we know the, the poll? I believe the poll shift is going to be 2023, and the New Madrid is going to occur sometime around 2022. That's what I believe. Regardless, it's going to happen, and I think it's going to be worse than people think. Uh, so let's take a look at the New Madrid uh, from a perspective of Pennsylvania. <clears throat> uh, about 2022, uh, pressure builds up and up and up. We know it's been building um, in that area. There's been lots of earthquakes going on through here. So what's the tear along the uh, St. Lawrence is going to uh, begin during the, the New Madrid. And it comes underneath the, the uh, Ontario and Erie and drops down <coughs> through uh, eastern Ohio and below yes, the south side of the Ohio River, I believe, and then on through Indiana and etc. So western Pennsylvania is going to have a bumpy ride because it's right near the action uh, <clears throat> in the Appalachians there. So that's an issue. And then also uh, people living in uh, the city of Erie and those these, coast, these coastal towns here um, are going to have to be, they're going to have to move because uh, for the New Madrid because don't forget the it's not just regular lake sloshing the 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 event itself is happening underneath Lake Erie so there's going to be a lot of wave action uh, during the the New Madrid fortunately for people in that area <coughs> of Pennsylvania you've got some serious height close to the uh, close to the lake that's this is stuff this is about 10 kilometers here at over a thousand feet amazing great height so you don't have to go very far uh, to get away from the action but you do need to because of the proximity to the New Madrid event under Lake Erie <clears throat> so that's what you got to watch out for there let's take a quick look at the nuclear stations for Pennsylvania we've got one two in the west, in the, uh, that would be the southwest, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, clustered into, so seven of them clustered over in the uh, east portion. So basically, uh, that fits pretty well, if you can call it that, uh, with the karst areas, because you want to avoid this area anyways because of the karst areas so it it pointing towards um, the north strip of uh, Pennsylvania central Pennsylvania and um, north western Pennsylvania uh, are the places to avoid the nuclear stations now um, we've covered uh, the um, the nuclear stations, so we got to stay away from for the of those for the New Madrids. So they may occur, uh, have a problem, a leakage, what have you. Um, and now, so we have the New Madrid. The shakeup <clears throat> after the shakeup, of course, you can expect uh, migrants to start moving to high land because they're going to get the message by then. Once the New Madrid takes place, there's going to be people are going to start moving there. That's why I think people should be moving there soon if you're going to if you want to go there. So <clears throat> we know we've got good rock. 
underneath Pennsylvania, except the, the karst areas. We've got the map, I'll put that up. Um, now, and you've got the sloshing during the New Madrid there, and the action on western, uh, along western uh, side of uh, Pennsylvania during the New Madrid. Okay, so now let's uh, <clears throat> move towards the, the pole shift. Let's talk about rotation stoppage. We know, uh, we know that obviously Pennsylvania does, does not have access to the sea yet. Uh, but it will in the after time. And I'm um, guessing that uh, Pennsylvania will see something like the, that the the coastal line will look something like this. Now Pennsylvania does, according to Zetatok, receive a what they call a bounce up. And so they gain they don't say how much they gain, but I'm, I'm guessing about 50 to uh, 100 feet max. So that puts the, the pole melt something like this, maybe, maybe 575 there, something like that. So you can, I'll put this link up on the, in, uh, for this video for, hey, what's that? You can do your own calculations, but this is at, at 574 foot pole melt. Now this is pole melt. So let's back out for a sec. Uh, so <clears throat> during when earth comes to stop what happens then? What happens is uh, well let's back up. When, as earth rotates the oceans naturally are going to be pulled out uh, to a certain depth to the equator because of the, the centrifugal force. Now I'm not a geologist, but I'm just I just do the research. But we know the oceans are going to be uh, are going to move when Earth. Um, let's say we are the Sun. We are we are planet uh, planet X looking down at Earth because planet X is summered. Earth will if rotation will come to a stop. And what will happen is when that happens, the oceans are going to want to equalize and they go to the poles. During that period of time, during ocean stoppage, uh, orbit stoppage, the seashore, um, your friend in, um, in, in Delaware and in New Jersey calling you saying, oh, look, the sea is going, it's, it's, the sea is receding. Well, it's only temporary. So what will happen? <clears throat> is while that's equalizing there's going to be movement of the other seashore it's very dangerous very dangerous so then after once uh, we have the pole shift well then that's when you get the the huge wash coming in and scouring the coasts and what I'm concerned about for Pennsylvania it are these uh, these bays here. So you're going to get a lot of funneling of seawater coming up here, and it's going to push up and past Lancaster, up into Hills, Hansburg, Harrisburg. Sorry, uh, I believe that's the that's the capital, isn't it? So and we're going to have uh, we're going to have a uh, funneling up here. It's going to push up. You know, funneling in here and funneling in here. Now, <clears throat> it is true that the Atlantic is widening because we follow Zeta Talk in this. So, since it's widening, there's going to be a little more room to breathe for the water to move around. But that's a little comfort because southern U.S. is being pulled down and will stay down. Uh, it'll stay down apparently as low as uh, 100 feet from where 150 feet from where it is now, but prior to the pole shift, it's down lower. In the last weeks, it's down two to 250 feet approximately. So as you can see, there's a lot of action with the sea going back and forth, and that's 
Okay, so now, <clears throat> further complicating the issue for, for uh, these states is that, well, you can see the valley here from New York to Montreal. That valley uh, where you have, uh, I believe it's Albany, Plowkeepsy. I'm sorry if I don't, I'm Canadian, like, you know, we pronounce things a bit differently up here. So if I get a pronunciation wrong, I apologize, but uh, let's just move on. So we got uh, Saratoga Springs, uh, Glen Falls. <clears throat> All these, these towns, I believe, are not safe because this is a folding point between Montreal and New York and it's because of this rock uh, layer, uh, the, the, the differences in the rock there in the valley, so that's a weak point. So it's going to, so what's happening, this is a, an axis point for the buoyancy of this uh, peninsula. So what happens is when during the pole shift when this peninsula breaks cracks all the way down it's free to move this is free to move now whereas before the pole shift it's tied with this old rock this is old, this is part of the, the the Canadian shield craton here so it's tied here but when that when that breaks that leaves this peninsula free to bob up because it has a buoyancy to it. Don't forget that the whole Atlantic area, the whole Atlantic area is being uh, stretched out. This is all being stretched out in, in, the North, in the North Atlantic. So the seafloor here is all losing support. So <clears throat> when that breaks free, this peninsula, it bobs up. And the, it's that bobbing up that we're talking about now. Um, so what happens then is that uh, New Brunswick and the mouth of the at the mouth of the St. Lawrence uh, bobs up according to Zeta Talk uh, about 450 feet. The toggle point is between Montreal and New York, down this valley. Well, the axis point. The Zeta Talk calls Pennsylvania the toggle point. <clears throat> so it also gets a lift up, uh, as I said shortly, uh, is uh, about 50, my guess is 50 to 100 feet. So <clears throat> you can prorate wherever you live what, this, what, what the cosines are going to look like. If you prorate 450 to about 50. So that puts Montreal probably at about a little less than 200 feet above where it is now. Quebec City, maybe 300 feet above where it is now. So if you are in, for example, in Maine, so we call that a bob up of 300 feet. So you get your, your hey, what's that, dot com sea level map. I'll leave the link there. We know that the sea level worldwide is going to be 675. So we're looking at a bob up of 300. So now that looks like 375, doesn't it, for a pole melt. This is 2025. So if you're in Maine <clears throat> and you're living uh, in one of these towns, so here is Abbott, uh, fairly close to the sea, within walking distance. Uh, so you can you can you can guesstimate where the where the sea will be if you know if you prorate properly the distance. Um, as I was saying, this is Zeta Talk information from 450 to here and approximately 50 feet roughly in Pennsylvania. So you can guess where the sea will be. That's the, after the pole melt. Before the pole melt, it's just too, it's just too crazy 
uh, it's just too crazy. We've got so many things happening to the sea here. The loss of the um, support of the of the uh, North Atlantic seafloor. You've got the pulling down of Florida, and then uh, and it stays down. You get the bob up here. And you've got the tear along uh, during New Madrid, and that's going to affect the lake levels here. So you just um, you have just so much going on. You really really have to. Um, in my opinion, it's better off to uh, do your calculations where you think that we're at 2025, where, where that sea level, the sea uh, shore is going to be, and then keep that in mind. Write that down. So in 2025, when you make your walk to the sea, um, you'll you'll have a, a rough idea where to look for it. And potentially, like I said, you could plan it if you if you you do have some numbers to work with. You have some numbers, uh, so you can plan that. Uh, if you, as I said, uh, I wasn't supposed to be repeating that. So, so we've got uh, one thing. Uh, okay, about Pennsylvania is that, from what I can see, uh, it's fairly highly populated. It's Thirteen million people in Pennsylvania. So there's going to be a lot of people surviving the pole shift. That's good. But it will be pretty busy place. Now, we also <clears throat> have to take in consideration uh, the the people moving from the coast into Pennsylvania. So obviously, that'll be taking place in New York and Vermont and uh, Maine. But Pennsylvania will have its own load, especially since it's so close to New York. So all the wealthy people here, and let's remember, the wealthy people have lots of ways and means to get around and to buy. So expect the wealthy to be moving into Pennsylvania. So, and we know the attitudes that come with uh, families that have, had, that have had money for uh, for centuries, decades. Uh, so they have a sense of uh, entitlement and some are worse than that. Not only that, you also have the, the government uh, people as well. So there's a similar attitude there, wanting to lead. Them. So the thing is, you're going to have the migration of people. So that's one big problem with Pennsylvania is, is nearness to, um, to the coast and where all that, all that wealth and government going on there. So this <clears throat> brings up the point, um, I think, that if you're going to obviously settle in Pennsylvania, it's going to be northern Pennsylvania, nor northern to central, and you want to be hidden. And I think that's probably the most important factor of settling for your survival camp, is not to be found. So uh, and that brings up the subject, I keep bringing this up, and that's having propane for cooking in the aftertime so you have no um, smoke trail in the sky. Now we'll cover the weather in a bit. Um, so oh, no open fires, no cooking with food, food uh, with, uh, with, with wood. Now <clears throat> I understand Pennsylvania has had a, <clears throat> a long coal mining past so one could, if one found uh, a, a coal seam, which is very likely during the pole shift, one's going to open up. Then you're lucky. You can see yourself lucky because coal burns pretty, uh, pretty smokeless if you get it right. <clears throat> so you have that advantage as well. So stay hidden, propane uh, for the first few years until things settle down. Now, also, um, there's another factor to do it. Yes, uh, rocket stoves. You might want to look into. Uh, smokeless fire burning with rocket stoves. I'm not convinced that heating your house with a rocket stove is smokeless yet. I've seen some videos and I see some smoke rolling around so when it first get heated up so I'm not a believer in heating your house with a rocket stove but definitely cooking is, an, is a very cheap alternative um, <clears throat> whereas propane is um, much more positive straight ahead you light it and you got heat so there's 
uh, that's a lot to be said for simplicity, like especially in the first years of the after time when everyone's getting settled in. So, uh, propane. Now, <clears throat> one thing I want to caution people is, uh, for example, if you have a house and you're not living in a karst area, so you're obviously hopeful that if your house is um, somewhere hi uh, hidden, um, that you can uh, survive, have it survive, or rebuild it uh, in the after time. So I'm suggesting that if you have gas uh, piped into your home, that you should, before the new Madrid, that's before 2021, about 2021, is to have the gas lines capped off to your house and bleed the gas from the lines and separate the gas lines from your house before the New Madrid because Pennsylvania is, according to Zayatok, is a bend point. So the land will be bending and obviously it's bending upwards uh, for the lift of uh, New Brunswick in this area here. So it's a bending area. So there's going to be a lot of stress. There's going to, there's going to be a, a sinkholes opening up in the karst area, landslides, what have you. So uh, that's going to happen. So we've got to keep that in mind uh, that you're on good rock and uh, you're not in the karst area and that your gas lines are not connected to the house and in fact capped off. Um, so, so Pennsylvania is going to move, as all uh, states are going to move during the pole shift. <clears throat> I want to just reiterate, this may sound, I'm getting people commenting about magnetic. The pole shift is not magnetic. It's a, the magnetics are involved, but it has nothing to do with the migration of the North Pole. A north magnetic pole it has nothing to do with that. the The pole shift is strictly a. Actually, the pole shift is a misnomer. It should be called a crustal shift. So what happens uh, during a crustal shift is that the crust of Earth is separated from its molten uh, core. So the upper crust moves independently of the core. So what happens is during the pole shift the core, magnetic core, portion of it, has already locked on to pole, uh, planet X as it passes by. So it's rotating just before the pole shift proper that we experience. It's rotating and is following Planet X's lines of force. And, and then it comes to a stop once the lines of force equal out. It falls in line with Planet X's line of force, lines of force, stops at that point. And then <clears throat> the, uh, the crust follows minutes later. I'm just guessing, but it follows later so when from start to finish the whole process is an hour long so what happens is that the crust so okay the 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 geographic north pole that portion that is is relocated down on the on the the equator and meanwhile uh, the bulger brazil of brazil off brazil the Atlantic Ocean comes up and becomes the new land in the North Pole area. So you see it has magnetics are involved but it's not a magnetic switching of poles. That's just a that's a Planet X cover-up vector, disinformation vector. Okay I get rather intense about that because I get uh, these comments of people thinking that. I'm just going to get it clear. So we've got Pennsylvania, and we've got, oh yes, the weather. Okay, so <clears throat> what's happening 
is that currently uh, Pennsylvania is at 41 degrees latitude, 41 north. But where it's going, so that puts it puts it uh, down here, down here, about here. But now it, it puts it at 41. But this zeta talk map here. This is from zeta talk with the lateral uh, with the latitude lines added to it. Um, it's not my creation from zeta talk. Uh, this map is this is where. No, this is the after time. This is um, 2023, just after the pole shift has happened. And this is what the layout is. And this map, actually, if you were to lay this on a piece of paper and cut this out, cut all that out, including that, actually, you leave the cut. You cut the whole outline out, and that'll fit on a golf ball. It'll fit on the ball. Anyways. Pennsylvania is right about here in the after time. That puts it at about 55 degrees uh, north latitude. So you're going to move up about 14 degrees closer to the North Pole. It's not so bad. Believe me, I wish it was me because I'm moving to the equator and I know I'm not happy about it. But anyways, so uh, so. If you want to know what the weather is going to be like in Pennsylvania after the dust settles, after things settle out a few months, uh, you can study um, the weather in northern Poland or Germany because that is a similar latitude in the northern hemisphere. So they, that will tell you what the weather is going to be like um, in the new northern Pennsylvania here. So you have sea access coming your way too for Pennsylvania. Uh, apparently according to Zeta Talk, Western Pennsylvania is weather improves. And I believe that's because, as we know, the St. Lawrence Seaway is ripping open. And this is this whole peninsula is being pulled down this way. So it's bringing the sea, I believe, into Lake Ontario. Now this is just pole melt. Doesn't indicate this, the tear, but all this opens up. So the sea is coming all the way into, most likely, into Lake Ontario. That's really excellent for Pennsylvanians because uh, if Lake Erie does not become part of the sea, you'll have a freshwater lake here, you can travel, Plus, you'll have uh, cl fairly close access to the sea in the in the new Gulf of St. Lawrence, and that is anyway. So I think the the better weather for uh, Western Pennsylvania is coming from the fact that the sea is coming closer to it, and it's a moderating <clears throat> influence on the weather. So uh, it's a busy it's a busy uh, place for Pennsylvania. And I think that uh, the presence of the Amish people would be a, a very positive influence on the, for the, the, uh, the quick turnaround for many people in Pennsylvania who will have to go from packaged food to bottle, bottled water to an agrarian lifestyle. And that'll be a wonderful thing. I just, I'm just hoping that, uh, that um, uh, the, the amalgamation of forces and people can make it uh, as peacefully as possible. So, uh, that's Pennsylvania, USA. Okay, let's take a look at New York State. But just before we do that, what is obvious about 
each state in the United States is that each state has its own set of problems. Uh, we have uh, mountain buildings building going on in the West Coast. Uh, we've got volcano action set back from the coast. Oh, I don't know, what is it, about 100, 100 miles or so? Uh, maybe 200 miles from the coast. So that means uh, any uh, survival in uh, west of volcanoes along the Rockies and Sierras uh, is very tricky. Now on that subject, we know that we have volcanoes spaced from, well, uh, all the way down, starting with uh, Baker, and then we've got uh, these volcanoes. I'm trying to find them. Uh, we've got the Three Sisters down, down a little lower, and we've got uh, Mount Hood. They're all spaced out about uh, maybe 100 miles or so. And when you look at, let's say look at Mount Hood here, for example, uh, we know that it's, it's going to sweep this way, the ash. Um, so, but when you follow my curse, it's going to sweep out like that, and you're going to have a, a, a slowly expanding triangle of influence, of ash drop. Of course, it's going to be the worst in the first uh, 50 miles or 40 miles, but there will be ash cloud uh, over these towns here. But if you carefully placed your, your survival location, say for example, um, um, don't quote me on this, but say Salem. Uh, I don't see a it was hood there. Um, self sister, yeah. Just as an example, I'm not saying Salem is, is safe from ash, but let's say it, it, there's no volcano here. I have to look more carefully, but then it's possible to, to be in this area um, if you plan your avoidance to volcanoes very well. And of course, you have to consider all the other mountain building that's going on in your location, and you don't want to be too low. Um, in a valley because it'll the, the earth is going to be heat up in the low in the in the valleys rivers are known to boil and that's because of the massive sub subduction of the pacific plate that's going to be is going to be jamming underneath these mountains pushing them up by the way so there's a lot of action so potentially that's that would be another video but so you've got that problem on the west coast and of course, California is a network of, uh, it's just a vast network of, of uh, fault lines. And it's just, an, just a, and it's a focal point for the, for the bending of the North American plates. So uh, it's just untenable to survive in California, in my opinion. Then you've got the, the states that are sitting on the, on the, on the Rockies and Sierras, which you could ride, uh, through the pole shift, uh, so that's those are safe locations in there. Uh, then you've got the uh, the states that border the straddle the the continental divide down here that uh, are dangerous to the west. Um, and then you've got so you've got these transitional states here where you've got some safe land. To the west and dangerous land to the east. So, and then you've got the the inner states where you have very flat land. So you have extreme visibility problems there, um, and you have massive flooding because it's so flat and the rivers. They are they are all draining down into the Gulf of Mexico, which uh, the all the south areas um, of the Gulf of Mexico states are uh, going to flood massively, and of course this area is losing uh, has is losing permanent uh, land due to the sinking of the uh, North American plate at that in this location here. Same with the east coast, 
uh, not quite as as bad as as uh, the Gulf states. And then you've got the bounce up of this peninsula here with New Brunswick and Nova Scotia at the at the head of it, and so that's a blessing. Um, and of course we got this the relatively strong safe land of Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, and uh, uh, these air uh, in there. So there they have their own good advantages too. And so New York uh, seems to have um, a lot of the good things that geologically that you would want in a safe location. Now the uh, land in New York, let's take a look at, at um, what it's going to look like. Now we know that uh, this peninsula is going to essentially separate from the North and uh, North American no, uh, and the Canadian um, shield, which this craton here. And <clears throat> it splits down there. <clears throat> oh, by the way, keep in mind, of course, with the New Madrid, you've got going through down these states, uh, you've got that damage to deal with, those massive damage in that line uh, to deal with uh, a year before, I think, a year before the pole shift. So that could be a huge problem for people looking to relocate or to get supplies, food supplies, or what have you, uh, for the pole shift. So you have that issue with the uh, states in this area here like that. Um, so we got the bounce up here. This peninsula is is going to raise itself up, and that's due to the rock buoyancy. I understand with Zeta talk, it's it's a buoyant rock in here. Now, so it pops up 450 feet from New Brunswick, from the mouth of the St. Lawrence, uh, with a uh, axis point of this valley here, from Montreal to New York through Albany. That is uh, an axis point. Pennsylvania, they're calling it a um, the toggle point. It gets a bounce up. I've it's a guesstimate of about 50 feet or 100 feet from where it is now. Um, <clears throat> so New York is probably 75 to 100 feet of a bounce up. So if we recall uh, that. Um, about 550. Now, the 550 would be the pole melt. So, as I keep saying, and I'm happy to keep saying it, is that there's no sense locating your, your survival location where it's eventually going to be underwater. So, we've got to kind of eliminate that first. So, we have some low areas here in uh, western New York, central western New York, so you can, I'll have this map up on the on the channel so you can take a look at that, use that and put in your numbers. Uh, so you get, and then of course you've got a, a valley through here that's going to flood and you've got this um, this uh, valley from Montreal to New York that's going to flood up there. So these areas are not viable uh, locations for uh, for uh, a permanent location. Potentially, I keep saying, yeah, I suppose you can if you're stuck in Syracuse somehow for some reason until the pole shift. Then te technically, you could survive the pole shift through Syracuse and move and move afterwards. Um, I wouldn't want to do it in um, us right on the on the lake, but uh, yeah. But obviously, we don't want to be moving in the after time. Ideally, you'd want to find your location, calculate your the best you can. Read the signs. By the way, the signs will be flying at you when you go to look for your safe location. Don't ignore the signs. 
and they will point the way. Uh, so choose your location <clears throat> above, <clears throat> and uh, you'll be you'll be good. Now, the the rock in New York State is fabulous. We we'll, we'll have some movement through here, and I'll get into that in a bit with the uh, with the Finger Lakes. I'll get that in a sec. Get this out here. Um, but you have a wonderful piece here, and this right and this right in there, and that's part of the Canadian Shield craton. And you can see it here. So this rock up here is a, known as a craton. It's a it's an object. The rock is 3.6 million years old, and look, you can see part of New York, half, about half, or one, a good one third of New York State is that craton. So that's, in my opinion, that's the place to be. Now we will discuss other things in, in a bit, but that's that's a terrific place. Now look here, you can see, you got lowland. We know we got lowland through here. Uh, check out this rock here, and the rock around the craton. So I better do that now while I've uh, while I remember. Uh, we've got to look at uh, get to her in a bit. So this is the karst map. This is uh, New York here. Here's Lake uh, Ontario. So you can see um, the dark green is uh, is is exposed rock, but you do have some areas of hidden. Uh, let's zoom in on that a bit. Hoping it'll be enough. To, uh, yeah, so you have exposed rock, which is okay, so you can see it. Uh, uh, but here's that craton. So you've got, uh, now this is probably Vermont over here, so we'll do that in a bit, but Looks to me like you got one, like a sinkhole active possibility right there in New York, right in there. So keep that in mind. So look at your karst map just in case you're you're on that area there. So this is dangerous right in there. So <clears throat> so you got great rock. Uh, the land looks very rugged. I keep saying that. Um, when the New Madrid happens, and the Earth changes really uptick uh, in that last year, eight months before the pole shift, you're going to have the rich uh, moving around, and moving into these areas, and uh, from uh, New York, what have you, uh, wherever, and, and on the East Coast. So that's a problem for all the states, but uh, it will be a problem to deal with that, and of course the the way to deal with that, from my best estimation, is just simply to go early, get set up, and remain hidden. Uh, so, but you will. But uh, the thing is, is once um, the pole shift uh, happens, you'll unfortunately we have a lot of death. But the, those who survive will be trying to get away from the pole melt. Now, if for New York State, it's going to look something. I'm guessing. I'm guessing here about five. About 525 for New York State. We're just talking about New York State here. We're not talking, don't look down here. They're just New York and this area because we're prorating, don't forget, right? So this is what the what the seashore is going to look like uh, in 2025. So people are going to be slowly retreating into the on foot so in the after time uh, personally I have a hard time believing that um, anybody in uh, New York with a ton of money or never mind anyone who survived the uh, the pole shift is still alive and healthy and, and mobile I really find it hard to believe that they're going to find uh, a boat, find their way across here, and be able to make it into these highlands here uh, in the after time with uh, no support, maybe two or three people, who knows. I think 
and on foot, um, at best by donkey or horseback. So I can't, I can't believe that this is going to be highly um, uh, a, 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 a populated by migrants after the pole shift. It'll happen beforehand. So the trick is to get in there beforehand. Um, okay, so we've covered the migrant issues. We've got to deal, we've got to keep that in mind so that before the poll switch and the rundown, uh, there will be a lot of action then. Uh, but after the pole shift, uh, everything will be on foot. So, uh, so and, and watch out for the low areas. You can see low areas. Um, so in the after time, so let's deal with, uh, let's take a look at uh, nuclear stations. Everyone's afraid of radiation. Uh, okay, so we've got a few reported here, and some an Indian. Um, it's got an, an Indian in the name. It's down close to uh, New York, and there uh, on the Hudson. So that will be underwater, because that's in that Albany, New York, uh, Montreal Valley. That so that'll be flooded. Uh, this one here. Uh, is one to look out for. That one will be flooded, but there may be some airborne uh, during uh, beforehand. Uh, maybe the New Madrid. Uh, remember that uh, during the New Madrid, uh, there will be a lot of heavy action going down the St. Lawrence. So you have to be uh, away from this, uh, from the lake. Um, they. Zeta Talk says about 50 feet. So that's not very much to worry about, really, because it's pretty high. Uh, it's pretty high out here. So uh, I know it's quite high here, too, in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. So here, uh, yeah, 315 feet. So it's, it's certainly, but stay away from the lake. So. Ah, okay, so we're discussing uh, the uh, New Madrid and, uh, oh yes, the uh, nuclear stations. Okay, so that nuclear station, let me find it here. I know right where it is. Uh, I want this, I'm using this as an example. So I know it's near Smoky Point. Right there. Now this is where that that's this uh, power station is, nuclear power station. So 289 feet. So uh, it's going to escape the New Madrid uh, sl uh, sloshing of the of the Lake Ontario. So if it gets damaged during the after t uh, during the during that time, uh, there may be some radiation leakage. So I want to make this point here. So let's go over to this here. So what will happen in the uh, for the pole shift? Okay, it's before the pole shift. Okay, prevailing winds, prevailing winds. Here we go. Let's talk about prevailing winds for a sec. For Pennsylvania uh, and south, and for New York, probably Vermont, uh, you will st stay within the 60, the 30 to 60 zone, even like after the pole shift. So before, so the trade winds are they're, they're, they're southwesterly, coming from the southwest, and so, but they will continue to blow from the southwest. The problem will be is that what we can, what the land, what we consider to be southwest before the pole shift. Uh, Will not will will actually be a different. Uh, we'll think of it as a different direction. So when you see the continents here, this is what we're used to. But this these will be turned over. So I'm going to show you that. Okay. So so th this is the direction now of the fall the cursor. This is the direction of the prevailing winds now. I think everyone probably knows that who lives there. It's, it's from the southeast sweeping up like that. So that means 
for people in Rochester that are close to uh, this uh, nuclear station, you think, oh, well, winds are going to go southeast. They will, but the land will be changed. That's why we call it a pole shift. And actually, I prefer the term uh, crustal shift because it doesn't get confused with magnetic poles and because um, mag magnetic poles is, uh, reversal is a disinf planet X disinformation vector. So here we have the new orientation of the Great Lakes and New York. So now, in the aftertime, um, that power station near po Smoky Point, I believe, as okay, well, it's, it's somewhere. Ah, it's right here. Sorry. Uh, anyways, the point is, is that uh, it's around somewhere. Here it's rare. So now the the southwesterlies haven't changed, but but the but the crust has. So now the winds are blowing this way. Well. The experience will be that now the wind is blowing on land, on land, over the lakes, on land. So that's what you've got to do is you've got to look at where the land, how the land will lay uh, in the aftertime. But I suspect that, um, well, we know uh, by Zeta Talk that Lake Ontario will become, uh, sorry, I got myself turned around, uh, that Lake Ontario will become part of the sea. So the, when this is off, that will open up and the sea will come in with the sea access. So that means good things for uh, New York because you'll have all the sea access. So it's possible that that station will be underwater at that time. Uh, so this is, yeah, most likely will be underwater at that time. But I just want to use an example uh, what to watch for when we, when you're planning your, your uh, location. And we'll get to the weather in a bit. Now Indian Point is the other one in New York State and that will be flooded over in the apt time, uh, the, pole shoot, the, uh, the, the pole melt. So New York will also have sea access on to its southeast, and it'll have wonderful sea access on the inland sea to uh, its northwest side. So uh, New York gets a very big thumbs up for a uh, for a location in the after time. Again, the only major problem will be will be um, uh, uh, migrants coming in from from. Uh, New York City, but that, you know, on the coast, as I keep saying, it'll occur before the pole shift, or, or be slightly before the pole, months before the pole shift, um, and limited, in my opinion, in the afterwards because of this. Um, well, actually, now that we think about it, just after the pole shift, my mistake, actually, gotta, after the pole shift, this will be uh, mucky with salt water, with salt water because we have been salt water will washed up here. So uh, it still will be passable uh, in the weeks um, and year in the appetite. So if you say one year, so what, the melt is going to uh, advance about one foot a day. That's why I figured it out one time. A foot a day right after the pole shift. So 365 days, one year later, uh, 365 feet, but we've come up um, for New York State about 100, we'll call it 150, so that's going to be 215. Uh, so yeah, you're going to have melt, you're going to have water flowing through there. So as people become realize they have to get away from the from the sea, they may be moving. So you may have a little bit more migration uh, in the year after, 
after the pole shift. So yeah, regardless, we have to be careful of migration and get to these areas early and be hidden, regardless. So that um, is uh, that much on New York. I want to talk about this little girl here. This is uh, Natalia Vitrova. One year old. She is in the news recently. Um, she is suffering from radiation exposure. She's drinking milk. She's been fed milk. They have no choice in the Ukraine because the Ukraine government is so corrupt. They're not looking after their citizens. So they have to go into the forest and uh, eat, eat what they can. She's drinking milk that is from uh, cows that have grazed on uh, uh, grass in, in the Chernobyl area. Now, as I've said before, adults seem to, to handle it a lot better. But little ones, are, I think, are more susceptible. She's got a swollen thyroid, and that's why she's sick. Uh, now, if you could take a second, just uh, send her some love, that would be very nice. Now, the fix for that is just having potassium iodide pills. Because what potassium iodide does is it saturates your thyroid with uh, clean iodine so that the body doesn't take up iodine that's uh, radioactive. So you can exist in radi radioactivity um, with potassium iodide protecting your, your thyroid and that's the whole point. So we've got we've covered uh, migrants. We've covered the fact that it's going to be about roughly five. This is going to be the pole melt. So you can freeze the video and take a look at your location for New York there, or go to this website and put in 550, and you can choose your location. Uh, and I mentioned I want to talk about the Finger Lakes. Uh, if you want to know what the pole shift is like, the kind of power that is that is exerted on the land, you look at the Finger Lakes. These lakes exist because the prior pole shift has stretched this land and 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 opened up the cracks so that they become lakes. So these lakes exist because of prior pole shifts. So that's the kind of power that you have pulling on these on the on the land. So this area here will stretch during the pole shift. Now the craton won't. This this is this is this is just going to vibrate. So but still it's good land in here. Very good land. So we've covered uh, the melt migration, the nuclear stations, oh yes, the weather. Now we know that uh, the latitude for New York State is about 43 north. And in the after time, let's look at the Zeta Talk map here. This is from Zeta Talk. So here's New York State here in the after time, right up here about about 55 degrees, maybe a bit less, about 55 degrees. So that's an increase of about 13, 12 or 13 degrees north. So technically it would be a little cooler. Now let's take a look, because it's down here in 40, down here at 41, 42, 43. So it's going here. So it's going a little higher, it's a little closer to the poles. But let's take a look at that. The New poles. The new North Pole is going to be right there. So that means New York, at least southeastern sea access, right there, is going to have a direct line to the pole to the pole, new North Pole. 
So, so its new location will be about 40, 55. So all you need to do is, is, uh, is look at the uh, northern Germany, or southern Denmark's weather, study its weather, because that is a similar uh, latitude and situation to the North Pole that New York will have, the coast, the new southeast coast of, of New York. Now, I'm saying southeast, but in reality, it's going to be up here. So it's going to be north, uh, northeast. So you can remember that in the end of time. But the, the coast there, your coast, outside coast, your North Atlantic coast, will have similar uh, weather as uh, northern Germany. Now for uh, the inland sea for New York, along the inland, I think it's going to be better because of the sea will moderate the, the temperatures. And But that will be synonymous, I think, to northern Poland because it's protected by the Baltic Sea and it's at about 55. So study northern Poland to get its weather. And that to that's what the weather would be similar in the after time for uh, inner New York. Now also I want to comment on this. when when you get the tip uh, of the poles and remember the the winds are going to be south from the southeast the same as the, the globally the same so New York is going to get uh, water um, in a form of precipitate various forms of precipitation off the of the old Lake Ontario or oh, well actually it'll be the sea so you'll have, uh, you know, you'll have probably a fair amount of pre precipitation in uh, the new western New York, if you can picture that like that. So I think we've covered. Well, one, one last thing I want to remind people: this affects Pennsylvanians, and that there's a dam I've noticed here. And the Allegheny River. Now it's not in New York, but I want to mention it because this dam's going to go right there. So anyone on the Allegheny, uh, in these towns, uh, down to um, Pittsburgh and beyond, are going to get a, a, a big, a, a big wash from that broken dam. So, uh, but you don't want to be near a river, anyways. Uh, uh, too close to a river anyways anywhere in the world for uh, the pole shift so so that would be my take on the state of New York for the New Madrid and the um, af the pole shift and after time survival um, and don't forget that the New Madrid is going to isolate you um, from supplies uh, in the months before the pole shift so you have to start the pole shift one year earlier in all in all these states here on the seaboard eastern seaboard one year earlier get your stuff and get settled so that's the state of new york Okay, let's take a look at the state of Vermont. First, we're going to look at the pole melt. This will be, um, this is an estimate of what it would look like in 2025. Um, what I've done is I've got it at 551 feet of a pole melt flooding. <coughs> remember, remember, this will happen slowly, one foot a day for a year and a half and uh, we have prorated from the mouth of St. Lawrence uh, uh, up here uh, to at 450 feet bounce up <coughs> down to the axis point which is the valley between Montreal and uh, New York where Albany is in 
and uh, I've guesstimated, um, Zeta Talk doesn't say how high Pennsylvania gets bounced up, but I'm guessing about 50 to 75 feet roughly. Um, <clears throat> so that puts Vermont at about um, 100 to 150 feet. So, uh, so the hundred is so that's uh, I've got it 125 uh, feet here. So, <coughs> if we would be maybe be a little bit conservative, yeah. So we'll just we'll just stay conservative on uh, <coughs> on the amount of flooding. It uh, could be worse. Could be better. Well. <clears throat> it's not so bad because a lot of Vermont uh, stays above the waves so that's what it will look like <clears throat> the reason I mention this first is because um, bringing this up first is because there's no sense settling in an area where that's going to be underwater in the after time so we're looking at uh, a narrow state and uh, so you've got this new channel down here which I'll talk about in a, in, in a little bit. This is a, a very interesting development that just occurred to me <clears throat> when I started to look at Vermont. So underneath Vermont we have terrific rock. Uh, notice that the fault lines all run uh, north-south uh, through here like that. <clears throat> and if you notice this uh, this section of rock right here is right in here with the little pink dots in it that those are, that's much older rock this rocks about two billion years old <coughs> so now I'm pointing this out because there's a stretching pulling to the east during the pole shift so it's possibility you'll get uh, you'll get some cracking opening up in these rocks here it's possible. Uh, it's pretty old rock, but it may happen. So my point is to, if you can, locate yourself on this piece of rock right there, because that's not gonna, that's not gonna crack. It's not gonna open up. Now this is the Green Mountains, I believe. <clears throat> so very stable. Uh, in general, in general, the the state is good. The state is good for rock. I'm just pointing this out. Now the other issue with the rock with the state is uh, is karst. Now here's Vermont here. So you can see the karst areas here. And here and again here. Now this is going to be flooded, flooded over anyways except with the possible. Let's take a look at that. Uh, south uh, southwestern Vermont yeah so it, through in here you've got a bit of you've got a bit of karst it looks like right in there um, <coughs> yeah got a bit of karst so th this is the mountain range right here <coughs> no karst in it so remember so what we've got uh, in another map shows that uh, where Uh, it looks like uh, we've got, yeah, this is the other map. It shows here you can see, this is Vermont here, and you can see the uh, karst area. The light green is buried soluble rock, and that's the kind that can open up. Now, this goes pretty deep, so it's not necessarily going to happen, but this these areas you might want to consider staying away from if you can. Uh, of course, the locals will know the area, um, <clears throat> but the pole shift is a huge, huge event. So, I would avoid these rocks. So you've got some great, some good location here, and that the Green Mountains, and you've got a, whoops, that'll that'll be flooded. So you you do have a little section in here. Um, oh, that's uh, yeah, okay. So that's good. That's all fl mostly flooded anyway. So you got the Green Mountains, and you got this uh, north. Um, East area here, <clears throat> so that northeast area. Yes. Uh, 
right. Um, yeah, right up in here. Looks nice. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, so that's right in here. Looks good there. And this area here, the Green Mountain area. Those are terrific areas. Uh, no karst, high and solid, totally solid rock underneath. So now, <clears throat> dealt with the rock. Now we've dealt with the, the melt. So we know we can see this where we're not going to uh, set up our survival areas. Obviously you're going to have a bit about the Connecticut's going to, river's going to flood from the eventually. So you'll have, a, you'll have sea access on, on uh, this on the east and on the west. Um, <clears throat> now while I'm on the dis discussion of, of um, water, um, I want to get that water map here. I noticed that um, there's a whole lot of rivers in um, in Vermont, many rivers. Um, so these rivers are all going to overflow, and I also know there's I believe there's 78 hydroelectric dams, 78 dams in this state. So anywhere where there's a dam. Uh, if you're downstream from a dam, then uh, you're going to have to be very careful not to locate too close to the river. And so <clears throat> that's pretty much all. I don't. I haven't located all the 78, but you're just going to have to be very careful not to be downstream from a dam or close to the river. You can be downstream from a dam, but just don't be too close to the river. That's the whole point. So many rivers are going to overflow and the dams will break during the pole shift for certain and also uh, uh, some may break during the vibration of the uh, New Madrid. We know the New Madrid. I have to cover it with each state because some people may not just may just skip through straight to the state so um, <clears throat> this the Gulf is going to open up during the pole shift and uh, it's going to create an island here and they're going to have sea coming down to uh, Lake Ontario, so you'll have the sea opening up in here. So that's terrific for people uh, along here for uh, trade and for fishing. Um, now we, okay, so we're going to have that sea access and uh, now um, there is a, a nuclear station on the Connecticut which is going to flood over. Now if there's uh, <clears throat> any leakage during the New Madrid uh, it's going to blow uh, possible, a any airborne is going to blow this way. It's going to blow s to the south, in the direction of the southeast. So any towns um, and over this uh, park area might get, might get um, in into uh, New Hampshire. So that's the only problem now in the after time the the globe will turn 90 degrees so that means for Vermont and that nuclear station which is right here uh, somewhere in there uh, the, uh, the winds will be blowing in this direction down river down river and with the with the direction of the, of the flow of the Connecticut River so we have <clears throat> now let's talk about this amazing situation I've noticed opens up for Vermont and for Massachusetts and for Connecticut and for New York. <clears throat> Since uh, we know that this is going to split off during, during the New Madrid um, it's going to create an island out of uh, New Brunswick, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Connecticut, what's left of Connecticut. Now, I haven't analyzed these states yet, <clears throat> but it's going to create an island. That means the seawater is going to flow around it. Now, what that means is tides. Now, I'm pretty sure that Vermontonians 
I've never experienced a tide who've always lived in these little towns. Tides are are okay, but in the case of a channel like this, it's going to be extremely dangerous in here. Now let's just take a look at the distance here. <clears throat> this is 2025. We've got about <clears throat> an average of about uh, anywhere from uh, looks like about seven kilometers up to about maybe 30 kilometers distance. So <clears throat> even even the distance between these between these islands right here of uh, about 10 kilometers five at the very very uh, maybe seven kilometers seven kilometers by rowboat in by sea in a channel with tides is very dangerous and it's even far more dangerous than I'm saying right now I'll get to that in a minute so if you want to ply these waters the new waters for trade then you're going to need a boat that's uh, probably 15 to 20 feet um, long. Now, <clears throat> you can do it in, in a dinghy, but it's if you're a seaman. But if you're not a seaman, it's it's way way far too dangerous, even in even in uh, easy tides. Uh, to go that kind of distance, it's a long distance to row. Uh, so if you had a 10 foot or 12 foot dinghy that had a sail a sail on it, you can get up to maybe you know six or seven knots or so. Uh, you can do that in I don't know what two or three hours. Um, you might get across. And there's all kinds of things that can happen. Winds can come up, tide can change, uh, stuff can happen. So it's too dangerous in a boat that's that small. So you need at least 15 feet, 16, 18 feet. But if you have a boat like that, if you buy a couple of those boats, um, then then you'll be king of the appetite or queen of the appetite, depending. So, uh, because the trade would be terrific. Now, <clears throat> because it's an island, it's becoming an island by 2025. This area is going to experience tides. Now, when you look, now first of all, you have to consider. Even if, even if this island doesn't move, with this kind of volume of water and a flood tide coming down here and trying to get through this, ch this channel here, now I haven't even got to the good part yet, um, that's going to be um, a very dangerous situation. But what's happening with the, with the island here is that it's tipping, this whole island is tipping out into the Atlantic. So it's going to open this gulf up like that so this and the sea's coming in so what's going to happen during the flood tide the the the, the water is flowing in you get a funnel effect right away <clears throat> so by the time it gets to old quebec city it's going to be just roaring through there and i'll i'll give you an ex a real life example in a minute um <clears throat> because i i grew up with these this kind of tide <clears throat> now <clears throat> it's bad enough in here where it funnels down now technically it's going to open up in here according to what we see here. It's going to be very dangerous in here but don't forget this is going to open up. But anyways, a lot of water is going to see what is going to be coming in this way. Now guess where it's also want to be, want to go? It's want to push down this channel here. Now that's going to be very dangerous um, <clears throat> in here. Right in there. Because you're going to get a lot. Uh, you're going to, the water is just going to be crashing through there in high tide. What one full, full, uh, full tide flow. Now, but it's still got room to move through there. But look down here. You've got it narrowed off to a tiny little a passageway through there for the for the sea. That's for all of this seawater within a couple of hours all this water is want to, going to want to go through that little section right there and you're going to have a, another another one through here now this opens up a very interesting situation 
for <coughs> for this new island right here. Actually, there's two islands. There's one. Is looks like there's a channel going to open up through there. That making this an island, and uh, most likely uh, this will open up in here. Probably because it's going to be stretching. Don't forget pulling this out. So likely this will widen a bit. So and this will sink in here. So you're very very likely to have a uh, an island here and an island here. Uh, so you're going to have incredible tides coming through here. Now that's good for fishing, but it's beyond believably, unbelievably dangerous because of the amount of seawater it's going to want to, it's going to be roaring through there. So with that, now the reason why I know this is so, it's going to happen is because I grew up with it over here. Uh, this is where I grew up on Vancouver Island, Campbell River. And so this is about three or four hundred three or four hundred miles of uh, inlet let's call it let's call it 600 miles inlet it's not quite that much <clears throat> I remember growing up standing on the ridge overlooking Campbell River in the 50s looking looking at the water the water was white going through here on a windy day and during a, a full uh, full race tire, tide, you had the water was just white. And many a many a person has died in this drowned in this area here, uh, or boats overturned due to the incredible. So the 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 water just goes nuts in in here. So it's world very well known world renowned tides through here. Um, so I know um, <clears throat> what the, I used to fish out here with my with my dad. So I know this this area. I know what it's like. So this area here for people in Vermont uh, is just going to be uh, a crazy place uh, of water in here. So again, terrific fishing, but very dangerous. So you're going to have to. Um, be very careful about transiting across this this area during a, a full uh, a full race tide. Very dangerous. <clears throat> now the cool thing, as well, is that's uh, that's developed here. That will develop, is that this island. Uh, to go to this island. Uh, to cross in those the waters that are coming through there, you'd have to be a crazy person. The waters through here would be so dangerous and fast that nobody's going to want to go go uh, no or be capable of getting across that. So the thing is, and it's the same with this island, even more so on this island because it's right in the middle. So what that makes this area is a fabulous area to to settle for. Uh, the after time if you want to be away from the threat of um, migra migration. You're going to be isolated uh, but um, uh, the island what is 10? Well it's about it's about 50 or 60 kilometers long um, so that would be and will be right on the Atlantic Ocean the new Atlantic so a terrific uh, opportunity for somebody daring who would like to have um, a family or two or a community or two uh, all of themselves on an island. Now obviously people will move there before some will move there before the pole shift. Uh, some may, who knows, what, but who, whoever moves there before the, before the pole shift uh, won't get off easily. That's for sure. So after the die out and what have you and all the social whatever uh, things that go on on an island uh, like that uh, after a while it will be left to those who survived and in your communities and you'll be isolated uh, from the rest of the world really. <coughs> Terrific uh, opportunity there. So we've covered uh, the rock, the stretching, um, 
we've discussed uh, the stretching and the possible cracking, I believe, that could open up uh, in these in these areas here. Um, and uh, so it, you want to be on that those green mountains and avoid the karst. This looks like a good area. Now I know I've been fussy about the rock in Vermont, but generally it's all very good. I'm just being fussy about uh, if a person wants to be fussy. That's why I I isolated these rock these areas in Vermont for. But a lot of it is still very good. So let's move on to migration. Um, migra of course, migration is an issue for all the states, and uh, this particularly for a highly populated uh, area like uh, Philadelphia, New York, and Washington. Uh, so it is a problem, and I think the the, pro the 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 fix for that is to be prepared for um, this the influx before the pole shift. After the pole shift, um, I don't know how many there. There will be thousands of people, so northern Vermont would be better. Um, would would be better. Obviously, the no borders, so you can move up into these areas as well uh, in the after time. Obviously, not beforehand, but uh, you could you could retreat. So, but if you're if you want to get settled in here, then obviously being hidden and going there early. So that would be uh, before 2020, before the New Madrid. So there will be migration through here. Uh, there will be the wealthy will be moving up in here. So you'll have to be hidden and get there early. Um, now, the the. Okay, so that's good on that. Now, so with the New Madrid happening, obviously, um, I believe at 2022, uh, that's going to basically vibrate Ver Vermont, but I don't think it's going to be a, a problem geologically. Uh, obviously, all the states will have some landslides, or have you, if they, if they, and you are close to the action here. So you may have some landslides and what have you, uh, possibly some some sinkholes or some some um, something going on during New Madrid. So you want to be uh, aware of that. So you will actually not only think about it, be fairly close to the action here. It is a spreading. It's not a compression. It's a pulling away and a lifting, a bit of a lifting. So you just have to take care for the New Madrid. Now. Uh, the other thing about the New Madrid is that once uh, all the bridges go down on the St. Lawrence and through the Great Lakes here, it's going to isolate uh, Vermontonians from the rest of the um, the states, rest of your country. Uh, there will be no access to Canada, possibly uh, just not going across to um, the, the, the St. Lawrence. And so also, uh, being there's so many rivers in, in Vermont and in these areas, you're likely also to have all the bridges down, or, or many of the bridges down during the, uh, after the New Madrid. And so it makes travel difficult. And of course, there's going to be army checkpoints going up. Uh, so the point is, is that it's very hard to predict where it's going to go while we know the new Madrid is going to happen. So uh, ultimately you just have to be prepared a year earlier. That's just the reality that um, I think that everyone on, uh, on the uh, eastern seaboard of the U.S. has to take into account that you have to be ready for the pole shift one year, year earlier than everyone else because of the isolation that will occur during the new Madrid. So uh, okay, migration, uh, and we have a, a new sea access for Vermont on both sides of Vermont, uh, and the rock is good, and you have fabulous opportunity if you want to get yourself uh, one or two boats, sailboats preferably, and um, 
Now let's talk about weather. Vermont is at uh, it's at 40, 44 and a half north. So if you want a good idea as to what's going to happen to what's, what the weather is going to look like, what's going to happen is you're going to have the you're going to have the North Pole right here. So the ice sheet is here. So, um, so now the weather-wise, you're going to, you're going to the north, northern latitudes by about uh, 12 degrees. So you're going from from 45 to about 56. So you're going about 11 degrees farther north. So, if you want to know what the weather is going to be like in Vermont, <clears throat> on the coast, the coastal side, or at least the, shall we call it the eastern side, the current eastern side, then look at the weather in um, Ger northern Germany and Denmark, because it's a similar situation, because it's a it's, uh, straight line to the North Pole, or at least, well, not quite straight line, but it's a similar arrangement. Uh, exposure to the to the um, to the cold north, so that'll be good for uh, to compare for uh, Vermont on the on the eastern side. For the western side of Vermont, since the the sea is coming in here like that, then it's an inland sea. So a similar area for western Vermont would be um, northern Poland. Because it has the Baltic Sea as a, as a, a semi-protective environment, so northern Poland for uh, western Vermont, in here. So a great state, uh, isolated. There may be some issues with the wealthy coming in. To be going early, it'd be good. Uh, New Madrid action's quite close. So you have to pre prepare a year early for that, for supplies, that kind of thing. And uh, so that would be the state of Vermont. Okay, I'd like to conclude this video with a quick overview of uh, the states I've covered. Pennsylvania is great. A busy place though has um, probably will have uh, fresh water in Lake Erie um, and salt water uh, a new saltwater coast um, and will have um, a lot of migrants coming into it um, and of course there's rivers that have to be stayed you've got to stay away from uh, Pittsburgh probably stay away from that area so and of course the karst in this area you gotta watch out for that and uh, stay away from here of course is the, the number of, uh, of uh, nuclear power stations in here as well so this area is it so it's basically North Pennsylvania and uh, so and it's a dam in the on the Allegheny River Got to watch out for that's going to break. Uh, so all dams are going to break. So you just say you just can't be downstream from a dam cl too close to a river uh, in any state. Uh, New York's good, a uh, bit low in here, so you you obviously can't um, do your uh, safe location in there or in this valley, of course. Um, I think this craton is here is a fabulous place for uh, for a safe location. And it will be isolated in the um, in the at the time, eventually, with fabulously powerful tides blowing through here. I mean, blowing through here, and of course down this inlet. There's a lot of width in here. There's up to uh, between 30 kilometers, uh, or so up to 30 kilometers. So there's a lot of water coming down here, and it's going to have a crazy tide in here. And that's going to bring about, as I said, this island 
and that would be an amazing place to be as well as it was one here so wow amazing amazing opportunities in here uh, for an after time and Vermont is great too the Green Mountains look beautiful um, gotta stay away, stay away from a little bit of karst in that area and uh, <clears throat> the migration will be pretty heavy gotta get there early and get hidden um, and uh, be lots of fresh water. There's a lot of dams in Vermont that are going to go, so we've got to stay away from those rivers. Uh, anyways, a wonderful place to be on the on the ocean. It'll be colder, um, and you'll have more sea access. So it it should be it should be a really great place to be. I just um, really envious of. Uh, people in, in these in this area so that concludes my uh, this video uh, next video we'll be doing um, the rest of the New England states which will be Connecticut Massachusetts uh, New Hampshire and Maine and that will be my last video in the series and then after I've done this uh, I'll be heading into doing Canada and after Canada, I'll be doing uh, the UK. So thank you very much for watching. This is Chris Thomas. Bye for now.